Welcome to Geeks Between Worlds, the crossover podcast where pop culture collides. What's up, everybody? I'm your host, Oscar Lucio, and we are with Joel Gonzalez. What's up, gang? And I trust you, it's working this time. Everything's working. <laughs> Guys, I'm on a downhill slope. It's like I was like really figuring everything out, and then today it's like I got, got like idle hands, Devin Sawa. We talked about that the other day. It's almost Friday, though. Yeah, so it is almost on Friday. So wait, what does that mean? I don't know. Maybe, well, like, maybe that's why you're all sloppy. And oh, shit. I'm just like, ah, the yeah, week. Yeah. Them, them, that is. Usually we're, we're podcasting a Monday or Tuesday. Yeah, that's See? true. See? So we're podcasting a little late this Yeah, time. yeah. It's a, it's a Thursday today. So so we before we get into topics today, we've got some side topics. Number one, we're in our second year. Woo! Second year of GBW Podcast. If you supported us, thank you. I'm not going to say thank you anymore. I said thank you way too much in the podcast two-year announcement before this. I didn't. I, uh, you didn't. So thank you. Yeah. Okay, that's nice. As for me, I take back a couple of those thank yous. I mean, th- the 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 feeling is still there, but verbally, just when you're listening to that, be like, okay, that one doesn't count. He said thanks a lot. I did. I did. Because he meant it, though. I was so thankful. You were. I you was. sounded thankful. I'm not now. Now no. it's just regular. <laughs> it it's just regular, yeah. Okay. It was like it's done and over with. Okay. But yeah, we're, we're going to be focusing on videos, game streaming. We're going to have this guy on more, that guy on more. Steven's going to be doing some more production stuff. Shing, bang, boom. He he actually texted me today and said thank you for saying that he had a nice mouth. He does have a nice he, mouth. He has a very nice mouth. And he said that it was the nicest thing that anybody's ever said about him. Oh, that's sad. I, yeah, I know exactly. You got, you got a nice mouth. Yeah. <laughs> I I feel like I need to message him daily now and yeah. tell him nice things. Yeah, about. be very specific about his body parts. Okay. You know what I mean? Got a nice because... kneecap. <laughs> a yeah. real nice kneecap. Yeah, when it's when it's on the rug. When it's you. Oh, womp, oh. Womp, womp. Suck that dick. <laughs> 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 but uh, so one thing that I did want to get back to is you did get a new dog. I did. Yeah, yes. I wanted to bring that up again. Okay, so dog is awesome. uh, we got a new dog this past weekend her name's nova yes great Um, name she was born with distemper so like some wires got crossed in her little brain so her two front paws are always crossed and which leads to adorable syndrome it does yeah yeah uh, and along with that she also has uh like a muscle twitch Mm -hmm. which is constant It, it it probably won't ever go away um as well as her paws or her arms i guess legs legs yeah legs they don't have arms right yeah yeah i mean i mean if they if it was like on a human body the front would yeah it would it would be like the those front paws would be the arms so So her arms are crossed yeah so i get what you're saying all right you know what i mean um and like i said she's got that twitch so she's always bouncy Uh, i like that but she's a she's a really good dog she's getting used to the apartment she did really well the first few days um you yeah. were worried at first. I was, yeah. I was really You're scared. Like, ah. I thought it was going to be a nightmare because we left her in the in kitchen. the kitchen the other day. Yeah. We kind of made a little barrier so she couldn't get out, and she did not like that. <laughs> She's kennel trained, but I don't like keeping dogs in kennels yeah. for the majority of the day, especially mm-hmm. since my wife and I don't get home till so late. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, she's doing good. She's she's kicking ass. Um, hopefully, she didn't ruin anything today because we had to leave her in the bedroom. Some. Maintenance people were coming into the apartment. Maintenance people. She probably just thought it was you ignoring her. I know. It's oh, like, why? No. Why won't you love me? I didn't think about that. <laughs> oh. I just destroyed your mentality. Damn, man. Yep. Sorry, Nova. Yep. She's just like, what did I do that was so wrong? Okay, let's change the subject. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I got a dog. She's awesome. That's good. Um, I'm glad that you Pictures you chose that because you could have chosen and been like, oh, I don't want a dog that special needs and stuff like that. Yeah, but then who would have taken? Yeah, it, exactly, you know? and that's fantastic. There's already a bunch of shitty people out yeah, there. Yeah, she would have ended. You got to be the good guy. She would have had to stay in that foster home for who knows how long, mm-hmm. you know, until that lady could keep her. I guess so. So yeah, we we gave her a home. Exactly that that foster home was Die Hard, and you were Bruce Willis. Yes. You didn't have to save Nakatomi Plaza, <laughs> but you did. <laughs> but I did. You did from the evil hands Gruba. We did. We did. Well, I, mean? I can't take all of the credit for it, Jacqueline. Yeah. yeah it was Jacqueline's idea. Jacqueline. Jacqueline, we'll throw it in there. All right. You know what I mean? You're on the podcast. Yeah. You know, you could say whatever the fuck you want. She, she really did. It, it was really mostly her idea. She's a great dog. She's a beagle, by the way. That's good. I don't think I said that. No, you didn't. Okay. You didn't. How old? 
Uh, she actually turns one on Saturday. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. You and can today's have... National Puppy Day too. Oh, whoa! Boom. Yeah. I didn't know that. I'm gonna have to treat Lego extra special. Yeah. Nice. Go get her a puppy cake or something. Yeah, I'm not gonna get her a puppy cake. Okay. But I, I got I got some treats for her. All right. It's the same treats I've been giving her all week. You know. Oh, just I'll, I'll give her a couple. A couple extra ones. Yeah. Get get crazy with it. Perfect. Yeah. And I'll and I'll talk like this and I'll shake and she'll be like, holy <laughs> shit. <laughs> be all pumped. Be She's all always pumped. pumped about everything. She is always pumped about everything. It's great. Okay, so let's get into the topic. Let's do it. Um, pretty soon, Universal Studios is coming out with a re-release connected movie franchise yes. of their classic monster movies, starting with The Mummy. Yeah. Yeah, that Tom was a good Cruise. Trailer. Yeah, yeah, you can check the trailer out now. It's on YouTube. Go check it out. While you're on YouTube, go check us out. Yeah, I think I even did that in the bit before this when we were like practicing for yeah. this episode. Yeah. I even did that, man. I'm, yeah, I'm, you did a, a really, I'm a plugger. You I'm did a, a plugger. Re- you did a really good unboxing yeah. video. Thank you. Thank it was you. good. Go check it out. I like you it. might not like it, and that's fine. All I all I really care is your view count. So just check it if, out. If you if you like it, yeah, hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. Subscribe also. If you don't if like you don't it, like it, just just go just away. Hit the X on the corner. Don't hit anything else on that page. Just hit that X or. YouTube another video. Yeah, don't be you know an asshole I mean? and dislike yeah. it. Yeah. I mean, it's cool. If you want to dislike my video, I think that'd be sweet. That's fine. I'm okay with that. It's no, like, fuck you, dislike. Fuck, fuck it. Fuck it. Fuck, fuck, fuck yeah. it up. Yeah, fucked it. But anyway, so yeah, what's mummy. not fucking up is The Mummy. Yeah. Check out the trailer. Uh, there is an extended trailer right now that's also out that actually shows the plane stunt that they do in the trailer. That's, I assume, at the very beginning of the movie. It's gotta be. Got to be. Um, what we know so far is that they were looking for terrorists in this tomb, and they find the mummy, you know, because that yeah, happens. Yeah, they found a sarcophagus. Do you think they find just at least one terrorist, or they were just completely wrong? I don't think they found anything Jeez. but that sarcophagus. I mean, fuck. What did, you know? What does that say about or, the special team that or, goes or in? Or they found them, disposed of them. Oh. And while they were doing their post- uh, they're just like fuck it, bring the bring the the casket, the sarcophagus. Yeah, let's they do found it. that later or something. Let's do yeah. it. Why not? Yeah, let's let's uh, yeah. let's fly this thing. Yeah, we we came down here to shoot some people. If if your assumption is correct, right? But if they find nobody, you know what I mean. Tom like, Cruise says, "I want to die on a plane." <laughs> he does. He wants to die on a plane. He really does. Supposedly, a lot of this plane sequence that we see in the Mummy was Tom's idea. They go I believe in, it. Yeah, they go in a zero gravity plane, and uh, when you go in a zero gravity plane, it flies up and then it goes into free fall for a little bit. And they shot that scene of the plane crashing like that. And they say, yeah. you know, it's really no editing, no wires, nothing like that. So it's Just pretty cool. Tom I'm excited. Cruise flying through an empty cabin of a plane. Yeah, which he which he was on the outside of a plane for Mission Impossible, the most recent one. So yeah, yeah and then before that, you know, obviously Top Gun. You know, so he's just a plain guy. He is in the you know, in the aircraft sense, not just like a plain Jane or a, or a plain <laughs> Joe. I mean, he's kind of plain. I, I mean, no, I'm just not, kidding. I'm just not kidding. really. I mean, he I'm kinda, not the biggest fan of I'm, his. If you think about it, though, he's not eccentric. No, he's not. Yeah, if he wasn't rich, probably a real, real plain guy. Yeah, in, in the normality he's sense. A Scientologist. Yeah, Definitely not, not plain. plain. No. Yeah. Weird. We won't get into Scientology. Woo. My friend Koopa has been just watching videos on it, and he, not that he like supports it or is against it, just trying to figure it out. And he just well, it's Leah crazy. crazy. Ramini or Remini, whatever her name is, a chick from King of Queens. Mm-hmm. She uh, she like started an expose series on just know, exposing what, what, Scientology. What? Yes, because she grew up in it. Oh, and then she got all far. She probably got yeah. all far, and then they were just like, "Here, here's more knowledge." And she's like, "This she is actually, getting more cray." Yeah, yeah. She actually said she was at. She was invited to Tom Cruise's wedding mm-hmm. when he married Katie Holmes. Right? Yeah. Um, and she had like asked a simple question about where a certain person was. Well, this person happened to be like an executive in the Church of Scientology, uh-huh. and they like. Um, Conspiracy. Yeah. Well, they 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 totally just shun like, her. Gave her shit. Like, why are you asking him about this person? Yeah. It's like, well, you're, she's my fucking friend. You're not on that fucking grade yeah. yet. And I I guess that was like the turning point for her. And she started like investigating shit. She started finding out a lot of shit that uh, that the church was doing had done, and she didn't like it. So she said, "I have to expose you guys." Damn. 
and it was pretty cool. I, I think I watched maybe like the first two episodes. Mm-hmm. And then I didn't. Yeah, and then you're just like, oh, I. You know, the thing about that is that you, at some point, you have to care about Scientology enough in another sense. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's like I don't care about it enough either way to try to find out the shitty things about right. it. Right. I didn't like, care to know. I think yeah. I got enough out of the two episodes. Yeah, so exactly. Like, it's like, yeah, you exposed it enough. Yeah. Any further exposing is just me beating a dead horse. Well, you shouldn't do that. Well, no, you shouldn't. That's why you probably only stuck to episode one and two. Yes. Boom. Boom. But anyway, getting back, yeah, we we got on a Scientology rant, and uh, th- those can go deep. They can. Those can go real deep. Real deep. But uh, so it starts out with the Mummy. Okay, now what happened before the Mummy was released, and we saw the trailer, and we had knowledge of all this, was that we knew that they wanted to start the franchise, and that was supposed to be with Dracula Untold, with um, okay. w- yeah, with. <laughs> Uh, I, w- I was going to say Chris Evans. It's not Chris Evans. It's something Evans. But uh, he w- he was Dracula. Supposedly the movie wasn't critically received as well as they wanted to. Mm-hmm. At the end, you've seen him going through modern day society and stuff like that. So it left it open for another movie to come up, which obviously was going to be The Mummy, which w- is why they still had a slating for this. Yep. And... Uh, It just didn't work out. So now officially they're like, okay, now this starts it. We have some casting. We like we said before, Tom Cruise, um, Russell Crowe is going to be in the movie. Looks like he has a major part, even though the trailer doesn't really show much of him. He's the narrator of the trailer. Yes. So and then in that extended trailer, we saw him kind of kicking some ass. It was a fight scene with Tom Cruise. Oh, fight scene with Tom Cruise specifically. Nice. Exactly. So so and the best part about Russell Crowe being in this movie He's playing Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde. Yeah. That's awesome. So we might not even see the change this movie with the fight scene. Maybe we at least see him get uh, that that temper gets a little too high, maybe. Maybe not a physical change right away. Who knows? We'll have to see. Um, since he is a minor character in this, this tells me that we will have some other minor characters, I think, in movies. Um, su- cool. Supposedly, Invisible Man is, is uh, tied to Johnny Depp. Not a hundred percent, but if that is the case, that might be another person that doesn't exactly have their own movie. Now the list of confirmed movies are Werewolf Man, um, well Wolfman, Werewolf, yeah. Werewolf, Werewolf, Werewolf. Werewolf. Man. <laughs> <laughs> it sound, it sounds like a shitty comic book. <laughs> Serious. Oh, so Wolfman, uh, Dracula, Frankenstein, Bride of Frankenstein. And Van Helsing. Those are the other yeah. confirmed movies. Sounds dope, right? Yeah. Sounds dope. Totally. So um, now let's kind of get into it. Where where would you put these movies? If you had to list them up and a date, uh, you get to release them how you want. Like the order? Yeah, the order. Um, I'd start with Dracula. Start with Dracula. I so think... Mummy first, obviously. Um, that's yeah, what the we Mummy have. first. And then next is Dracula. Uh, I, I think he's just like a – he's a, a pinnacle – character you know what i mean yeah like absolutely you, you're gonna you're uh, you want the dracula movie right the majority of people are gonna recognize dracula i mean not to say yeah. that the other characters aren't recognizable but yeah. i mean it's fucking dracula yeah he's so, he's the head honcho absolutely yeah he wears, he's got a cape well when, that's the thing is that in every single movie to where all these monsters do team up in some sense or if there's a couple of them whatever dracula is always in charge right he's like charles he's like charles being in charge in Dracula the, in charge? Yeah. Dracula, Dracula in, in charge, charge of yeah. our days. <laughs> no, just kidding. It's only the night. <laughs> yeah. Actually, that would, that would exactly yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah. So, um, I'd go with him, like you said, because he's, uh, he's, he's the fucking boss. Yeah, he the boss, man. He, he the boss, man. He wears a cape, like I said. Yeah. Um, and Will maybe, he? Will he wear a cape? Ooh. Ooh. Maybe. I mean, bum, bum, bum. maybe one scene with a cape. Just like a, a quick cape. Yeah, like I used to cape. He's just getting a haircut. Yeah. Yeah, and then just take the cape yeah. off. That was your cape. Yeah, that'd be you great. got what you wanted. Yeah. All right. Just front so, cape. So second? Uh, second, go into Wolfman. Wolfman. So Mummy, Dracula, Wolfman. Mummy, Dracula, Wolfman. Frankenstein's Where, monster. What, what about Werewolf Man? Werewolf Man could be like... The B movie. Yes. It's the movie that's being released on Redbox the week before Wolf Man gets on Redbox. Directed by Kevin Smith. To try to get, <laughs> to try to get everybody. If it was by... <laughs> if it was by... It would it, be like, where's the wolf, man? Oh! <laughs> like, bam, by that's Kevin that Smith. Yeah. That's perfect. Yeah, that's perfect. Uh, and then after that would be Frankenstein. Okay. Which I, like I don't that. know if that would be like... Victor Frankenstein or 
yeah, the his monster. monster. Yeah. So, I mean, either way, thing. I'd still put it there. Um, and then, you know, obviously, Bride, Bride of Frankenstein Bride right Frankenstein. after that. I, yeah. I would think it would make more sense. Mm-hmm. You could split it up and then try to make it work. But in my eyes, this would work better. Okay. Um, and then Van Helsing. Van Helsing. And then if he does get his own movie, Invisible, Invisible Man. Man. Invisible Man afterwards. I, yeah. li- I like that. I like where it, that you put it at the maybe end. Maybe he's like the... The one that ties it all together. Yeah, exactly. It solves the loose ends of the problems because right. you know Van Helsing going to fuck shit up. Right. And he also made cameos in every single film no one knew. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. That, that'd that be the best part about it is yeah. like he was always there. Yep. Yeah. Either or maybe like like I was saying, maybe he's a, he's a teammate of Van Helsing. Maybe Van Helsing's doing this crazy shit. You don't know how he's doing it. You're like, man, Van Helsing is fast. He's everywhere. He's the boss. How are you doing that? Well, behind the scenes, E! True Hollywood story, Invisible Man comes out and is like, Van Helsing's getting way too much credit, bro. Right. I'm, I'm, over, I'm right there. I'm right there. <laughs> I'm right there. You see these knives? Yeah. You know why they're up in the air? Because I'm fucking holding yeah, them Yeah, I'm holding the them right there. That's not powers. That's me. That's me on stilts. I got invisible stilts. Invisible stilts. Yeah. So, yeah, that's my order. If you like it, thanks. If you don't like it, well, then fuck you. Yeah. That that That's an order. That's an order for yeah. sure. Like yeah, order 66 order. killing kid Jedis right there. Girl. Yeah. That, that is so sad. So sad. They kill so many kids. Star Wars, <laughs> killing kids. So here's my here's mine. Here's where, how it would go for me. Kay. Okay, so mummy coming out right now. Where uh, I almost did werewolf, werewolf man. man, dude. It's gonna be stuck. <laughs> it's gonna be there. I'm gonna get t-shirts. Werewolf man, wolf man second. Now, um, to get to wolf man, I have to explain to you Frankenstein first. Okay. Okay. So Frankenstein is a movie that is usually played on that sad note. It's always on yep. that sad note. Okay. And you, it's always on the the heartstrings because he's just an understood living dead creature mm-hmm. that usually gets too mad, doesn't understand why people hate him so much. A very like moral type of movie to where it quest makes you question just how you live and how people live and rights and wrongs of life. Okay. Yep. Fuck all that. Okay. Throw it out the window no for sadness. the Frankenstein. No sadness. Okay. Make this Frankenstein just hyper violent. You know what I mean? Make him just mad, angry. He, there, I don't need no heartstrings. Make him straight up, maybe even like a slave of Dracula. Maybe Dracula gets Fra- Victor Frankenstein to make him or some shit. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Just make him hyper-violent for his movie at least. Okay? okay. Now here's where I get back to Wolfman being the second movie. Have Wolfman be your sad movie. Okay, Mummy is going to be your action movie. I I assume there isn't going to be too much sadness. I mean, I'm sure there's going to be something bad. You feel bad for a character, blah, 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 blah. Right. Probably Russell Crowe, if anybody. Yeah. So, so Wolfman, you make it sad because he's just this guy that wants to be a regular dude, and he's got a curse, you know? Maybe make him kill one of his loved ones the first night when he doesn't understand what's happening. Make him kill his wife or his kid or some shit like that. Okay. You know, um, or, you know, to, I mean, you could have him kill just a random person in the street or maybe someone that he meets or some shit, but it, it won't be as sad. You know okay. what I'm saying? You okay. got, you got to make him really fuck up. And, uh, so, so you do that, you make his story sad and have him still at the end though, unsolved and make him still being like a bad person in some way. You got to have some conclusion. I know that, right? but, but don't make everything like, don't shoot him with a bullet yet. If that's where you're going, you know what I mean? You got to keep him around. So enter, so, so first Wolfman, now enter Frankenstein, okay? You okay. enter Frankenstein, have that hyper-violent movie. However you want to do it, like you were saying, maybe Victor Frankenstein, maybe Frankenstein's monster, maybe Victor Frankenstein's kid that tried to practice his father's practices from back in the day, mm-hmm. whatever you want to do, throw that movie in there, okay? So now, during Mummy, during Wolfman, during Frankenstein, you hear little things maybe not even about dracula maybe just about vlad the impaler maybe just little little things sprinkle it in there you know just sprinkle that dust sprinkle that dracula dust. yes sprinkle that dracula dust all over the three movies okay now your fourth movie that comes out is dracula now i like what you're saying you got to hook the audiences make dracula movie too completely understandable 
But if you sprinkle it through and then make that build up, make everybody wait and want that Dracula and then have Dra- write Dracula for three or four years if you need to. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. See how your mo- your monster movies are doing. Get a killer fucking script. Rewrite as many times. Reshoot. I don't give a fuck. Make a good movie. Right. People, make it worth pe- it. People get upset about movies getting pushed out or games getting pushed out. Well, really, it truly does just lead to something better. So I'm all for it. Okay. So, so put that your fourth movie, okay? Now... You, you're starting to tie everything up, okay? So now after Dracula, go back to Frankenstein, Bride of Frankenstein movie. Now what you do with Bride of Frankenstein is maybe you try to humanize Frankenstein then. Hyper-violent dude, just maybe Victor Frankenstein or Dracula can't control him, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And then they're like, hey, let's get let's get him a woman. Let's get him a woman. Let's see if that helps him out or something like that. You know what I mean? Because okay. every man needs a woman. You know, that, that'll that be the logic behind it. You know what I mean? Even though it's 2017, so people will probably be like, why don't you have Frankenstein be gay? You know what I mean? Which is fine. Whatever. That's your opinion. That's cool. But you can't gender assume now, so you can't just be like, every man deserves a woman. <laughs> Someone's going to jump on that. Every person deserves Needs a, person. a person. Yeah, yeah. So so either way, um, they would have to definitely gender assume that Frankenstein is not gay to make Bride of Frankenstein. Let's point that out there. Right. You know what I mean? So well, maybe, maybe that's maybe, maybe he's got lady parts and she's got boy parts. That's even way more fucked up. Yeah, but we, hey, you know, who, who are you to judge? I mean, yeah. I mean, that's you took that to a realm of possibility that's super close still. It's like so far of what I would think of, but it's so close to what reality is. Holy shit, transgender Frankenstein movies. Oh, wow. 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 That will you be just a, opened the door. That'll be its own series Whoa. of movies. I'm all for it now. Let's do it. Let's watch Let's it. roll it out. Let's make them pornos. LGBT and Stein. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. Oh, wait, there's a Q in there now, too. LGBTQ and Stein. There we go. That's, That's the half one. the alphabet. You need to. <laughs> <laughs> it's supposed to help you shorten things <laughs> when you do a. Okay, yeah, you make a good point. Yeah, but but anyway, so yeah, enter enter that Bride of Frankenstein. You try to humanize um, Frankenstein that way. You have a re- and you know maybe since you did Frankenstein before and he's a rage monster, maybe you finally get it right with Bride of Frankenstein. She's calm, she's collected. You know you did something to where maybe you had a fresher brain. It wasn't dead for as long. Blah blah blah. Give me a good excuse of why Bride of Frankenstein is smarter than Frankenstein and it's acceptable. So do that right, and then um, so then maybe even Bride of Frankenstein just brings humanization to all the monsters. You're like all these monsters aren't as bad. Bride of Frankenstein kind of got fucked over and put into this mm. situation because because that's the thing is Bride of Frankenstein you automatically feel bad for. Right. There there is no trying to convey sadness with that. Mm-hmm. It's conveyed. You're yeah. just like ah oh, the girl got fucked over. So so that's an easy one. Okay, so now you start having a big humanization for all these monsters. Enter Van Helsing right at the end there. And, you know, Van Helsing, good guy, air quotations, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Trying to do what's right. Rid the world of monsters. Sounds good if I don't know all these monsters, but you do. You grew a relationship or you built a relationship. For the past three years, you watch these monster movies and you care about them now. Well, now this good guy is going to kill all your monsters. Okay, it's like it, you're going to feel so torn because you're like, yeah, Van Helsing doing what you got to do. You do you, bro. You do you, bro. But then you're like, but Frankenstein's my man now. He wasn't at first fucking hated Frankenstein. I was questionable about the Frankenstein movie. Bride of Frankenstein came along. I like Frankenstein now. Now you just fucking cut his head off. You cut my boy Frankie's head off and I'm pissed. Maybe that even makes Bride of Frankenstein pissed. Inner, inner, in, angry Bride of Frankenstein. Oh shit! Boom, boom. Don't want to piss her off. I like that's, that order. That makes sense. Yeah. You you really thought that through. Yeah, it, it makes it, it makes it better that we had to explain it twice. Yeah. Because <laughs> now all those pieces just fit like bam, 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 yeah, bam, totally. bam. It makes yeah. more sense to you now. Yeah, it makes way more sense. Exactly. Totes so my goats. so <laughs> totes my totes my goats. <laughs> Show me what you got. You have my Samus in a very vulnerable position. For for all the listeners at home, Just I just do the crap. I, I got Samus right now, a little Nintendo statue, and I you you think she's doing the crab? I don't know. That looks suggestive, though. Or Is the crab suggestive? Maybe she's dancing. She's she's a she's a B girl. Like this is just <laughs> it's a it's a still of her a doing still. a, a okay. twisty loo. I thought I thought it was like a reverse plank. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm. 
I love them reverse planks. I'm gonna I'm gonna go with uh, still of a twisty Lou. Nice, I like that. You know what this reminds me of? Family Guy when Lindsay Lohan does the crab. <gasps> when she walk. does the crab naked. Yeah, oh, that's exactly what. <laughs> way to take me back, yeah, bro. Took Damn. you back. Yeah, way there back. you go. Oh yeah. All right. All right. So <laughs> so let's now let's get into the my favorite part about this. Yeah. Let's do some fan casting. Woo! I love fan casting. Let's fan cast. Uh, let's fan cast it up. We you you know who we said first. Do you do you remember who the the mummy is? You got a name for um, that? Oh, yeah. Look it up. Look shit. it up. I'll carry this on. She was a uh, gazelle from. She was Kingsman. gazelle from Kingsman. Oh yes. I'll get her with the name, still though. feet with the knives on the feet. She was cutting shit up. If you she haven't watched awesome. Kingsman yet. Kingsman is a fine it's feature. Fucking great. You need to fucking watch it. All I'm going to tell you is church scene. Now, I I hope you've Such seen Daredevil violence. because it's the same thing when someone tells you the hallway scene in the first season of Daredevil. Both fantastic scenes. Her name's Sophia Butella. Sophia Butella. And I think I'm pronouncing that wrong. Yeah, it happens. But anyway. Yeah. Sophia. She's the mummy. Yeah, and, and it looks great. They it do does. that little thing where they got the double pu- pupils, you know, double oh, irises. Yeah, dude, Makes her kind of look like a spider or something like yeah. that. I thought that was a cool little effect. It was something sweet. simple, something super simple that just nobody's thought of yet. It's just hook you in there. Yeah, you know what I mean? It's like, that's so simple. Totally. How has nobody thought of that? Right. Like, just give someone <laughs> double iris, boom, super creepy. And the way, like, her tattoos appear on her. I like how her tattoo and her markings, like, just appear on her body. Yeah. That's fucking sweet. Well, actually, they, they did that little double iris thing Mm -hmm. pupil thing whatever the fuck in uh exorcist the tv show oh did they yeah Mm. but it's only in one eye and it's only when like when like the devil accepts you or the demon accepts you or something like that i forgot oh maybe it's something that's like been in the long practices of the devil and the dead and maybe that's just a thing that i i haven't just came into in my life maybe if, you maybe if, 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 you go, if we googled it that'd be something about it's it. like the double eye yeah you got the double eye you the devil Demon i devil. thought it was always like a goat eye the goat eye is the devil right let's talk about goat eyes real quick goat eyes they're fucking so, terrible scary terrible i don't like goats it's like i don't have a problem with the goat per se like i've never had a uh confrontation with the goat all i'm saying though is a a go ever started something with me it would be like automatically i would take it to the next level like there would be no like middle ground where like we're playing with this kind of anger i'd be like no fuck you straight goat. up fisticuffs you're a piece of shit and you have the devil's eyes you have the devil's eyes like white chocolate white chocolate's the devil chocolate in case you didn't <laughs> know i don't like white chocolate it's gross all my friends like it they're gross i just i don't believe it's chocolate it's gross all right let's get to some fan cast motherfucker all right all right Dracula. Dracula. That uh, that's that's the one you want. Yes. Who who are we getting? So I had an argument with myself about it because mm-hmm. I have two people. Yep. But the first one that I decided with, I think would work the best just uh on a physical standpoint and a modern day standpoint. And a modern day standpoint. Um Perfect. Tom Hiddleston. Boom. He's great. Boom. Great actor. Boom. He fits the build. Boom. Boom. <laughs> um, you were waiting for it. Yeah, when I, was. I was about to drink that coffee. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So Tom Hiddleston, I think I think he would fit well. He obviously looks good in long hair if need be. Mm-hmm. Um, good looking cat. Yep. Just say if he's if you say he's good looking one more time, he's good looking. Uh, you like him? Yeah. You like him? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So anyway, my backup was uh, Leo DiCaprio. Okay, I like that. And like I was telling you, I think you haven't seen Dracula Untold though. I haven't. I, I would say since you like horror sin- movies, since you like Dracula, things like that, you you, you should watch it, watch it yeah. definitely because yeah. they take it to that back in the day. There's a little war, you know, everything like that. And he's in like uh in like old school like ceramic armor kind of looking. Oh, okay, okay. Now Leo would totally fit that. He'd look. be good, but I think yeah. I I chose him solely because of his acting. Yeah, I get you. He, he gets so immersed mm-hmm. into the scene, uh, like in Django when he fucking cut his hand open. Oh yeah, he yeah. Finished the scene like yeah. a boss. Let's think of this too. What would Leo look like with all black hair and like black facial hair? That like and a little bit longer black hair too. That actually might look fucking dope. We yeah. have not seen that look on Leo. No, we haven't. I haven't. I don't think I've ever seen that look on Leo. I don't think he's ever had dark hair. Yeah. Okay. So second okay, fan cast. Sec- I like. I like both those. Second those fan are, cast. Those for, are sexy for the Wolfman. Yep. 
or the werewolf man. Yeah, no, those are two. No, it, Wolfman is going to be a good actor. Werewolf man is going to be someone that you find at the trailer park that's Fucking in your John town. Goodman. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm a werewolf man. Oh, I'm a werewolf man. Where's my butter? Uh, I went with Tom Hardy. Tom Hardy. I think he he's a uh, he'd be a good fit for it. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, obviously, when he's wolf, it's just going to be CG. So yeah, yeah. But yeah, Tom Hardy. I, li- I like that because because that would also be good for your females. A lot of females, Totes. a lot of people in general, loving that Tom Hardy. Ladies love you know I mean? Tom. Yeah. I'm sure there's some bros out there that really like that Tom Hardy. Not. I mean, how could you not? Have you seen Tom Hardy? Yeah, have you ben- seen Tom Hiddleston? <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> couple of Toms. Oh. Couple of Toms. Oh, Ooh, yeah. 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 Whoa, never They're, put that together. They will become best friends. <laughs> that, take that, listeners. If you're about to have a kid, name them Tom. Probably successful. Very successful. Very. Fucking Tom. Bro. Yeah. <laughs> oh, another Tom. <sighs> Holy shit. Okay, moving on. Okay. I hate him. <laughs> Frankenstein. Frankenstein. I, I went a little bit of both ways. A little bit of both. You, you picked actors that could fit. Whether it be Victor, Victor Frankenstein or, or the, the monster, monster, which I respect. That's but I good. think what I decided finally kind of made a little bit more sense. Mm-hmm. Um, at first, I had thought to pick Brian Cranston mm-hmm. as the monster. Okay. He's so good at playing a dark character um, who's going through shit, mm-hmm. you know, but he still comes out on top, kind of. Yeah. On, yeah. You know, on, on the, in a darker sense, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Um, but then I had a second thought as to who could play the monster. Mm-hmm. So then I decided. Cranston could play Victor. Victor. I think he'd okay. be a great, um, like, you know, mad scientist. Well, what would be really nice about that is that you don't have to give him a big, big role. He could no. be a fucking killer supporting role. Totally. You know what I mean? Especially if, like, you made Victor Frankenstein, like, also un... I mean, he's reviving dead fucking corpses. The dude's not all there. Right. You know what I mean? So right. I think that's good. I now think be good. your pick for the monster, I think, is the most baller fucking pick you have. Golden shit, golden shit. Yeah, and I picked him purely on a physical standpoint. Absolutely. Um, I think it it just fits so well. Um, he's he's got a good face. Yeah, no, that's what I said. You said this pick, and I was just like, I was like, how did I not think of this pick? Yeah, that's fantastic. Uh, it took me a second. I actually just kind of searched through IMDb for. I just kind of searched through their database. Yeah, I, I googled male and female actors. That's what I did when I looked through this, and I just looked through oh, it. Oh, okay. A lot, of, a lot of like double, like a lot of Brad Pitt, a lot of like yes. Kevin Spacey. Yeah, weird. Yeah. But anyway, um, lay it on him. Vigo Mortensen. Boom. Yeah. Boom. I thought perfect. I thought he'd be good for it. Uh, how has he not been Frankenstein yet? That's what right. I. It's almost like how how has that not happened? Yeah, you would think. Yeah, you'd you think, think someone else would have seen you it by think. now too. Uh, so yeah, Vigo Mortensen, I think he'd be great for that. Um, and then moving on to Bride of Frankenstein. Bride of Frankenstein. I chose Margot Robbie. Margot Robbie. I have no reason for That's it. That's nice. I feel like I don't need a reason for it. No. Nah. Nah. Just boom. Margot Robbie. That's give that's her the job. The bee's knees. She uh, sh- she didn't even uh, <laughs> she didn't even audition. They just gave it to her. They called her and said, hey. This uh, this part's yours. You don't even have to say Robbie. Just Margo. say Margo. 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 We're sending you a screenplay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Come be in our show. Sweet. That's yeah. Nice. Let's leave, do it. Leave the Harley uh, heart under your eye. Right. You're wearing yeah. next to nothing again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Surprise. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, her. She's she's um, she's gained so much popularity mm-hmm. lately that I think. Um, she, it's just you. She's one of those people that you can just plug in and go. You know what I mean? Sure. You you just like oh th- this person's on board. Wham bam. Thank you, ma'am. She's like, talented. L- yeah, like a Brad Pitt or uh, who who else can you just plug in these days? Kevin Hart. You could plug oh, in. Oh yeah. The Rock. You can just plug in. Oh yeah. Those are some of those plug and play characters. Could you imagine right The there. Rock as uh, as Frankenstein? <laughs> he would just be like. You'd be like, no way that this came from a bunch of dead people. <laughs> yeah. There is not this many fit people. You know what I mean? It's like, it doesn't work that way. Right. Yeah, it he, had to be he like. He picked all of the fittest people he could find <laughs> and then made Dwayne Johnson. <laughs> and and he's also perfectly symmetrical. <laughs> no, yes. Yeah. Perfectly. Yes. But, uh, so, yeah. So, Margot Robbie, because, you yeah. know, Margot Robbie. Yeah. That makes um, sense. Now you, got, now you got Van Helsing. Van Helsing. Van Helsing. Van Helsing. All right. And at first, I didn't know why I chose him. I just like I think I felt bad for him because he <laughs> hasn't had a good movie in a while. 
Yeah. Um, Gerard Butler. Yeah. Yeah, I, I feel you. I feel you. He, yeah, and and that'd be like that good character that you would love to hate. Yeah, you know what I mean. It's like because because Gerard Butler, it's always like he's always playing like a semi stand up dude, never really a super shitty person. Right. And and Van Helsing could be the best of both worlds. You know what I mean? Doing things for the right reasons, doing them the wrong way, killing the monsters you love that you you grown so close to. Right. And then it's like ah, this this is great now because fucking Gerard Butler. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. I feel like I would, if I was directing him, I'd get real sick of his lip. <laughs> he's got that lip thing. Yeah. Where it's like he's biting down on one corner of his lip, but the other side just <laughs> hangs. It's really annoying. Hey, why you keep biting your lip? Stop it. Oh, cut, cut, cut. <laughs> Gerard. We hey, talked about this, hey, dude. Hey, Gerard. Hey, Gerard. Can we get you to uh, quit biting that lip? Thanks. Hey, you, the left side of your lip's real high up there. <laughs> You're going to have to tone it down a little bit. You're not Sylvester Stallone. <laughs> he does successfully do that lip thing, Sylvester. He does. does. He it's kind of crazy. I don't know how. He he almost made it just like work for him always. He's like, he's like he, I wonder if people were just like, what do they call that? Like a uh, speech impediment? No, 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 no. he's pretty good. No, no, he's no, a real no, successful the, one of those. It's like a hair. Oh, a cleft palate? Uh, cleft palate, yeah, cleft yeah. Cleft lip? Yeah, cleft lip, whatever you call it. Yeah, and and I wonder if that was just like on casting calls, you know what I mean? And he was just like, "Uh, got this one." (laughs) (laughs) Character has a cleft lip. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's perfect for me, (laughs) Adrian. Okay, so so you you got him pretty well set up. I I like what you did there. Um, Gerard Butler does need some money. I was actually just seeing this thing recently about like why people don't choose him and he's still in some upcoming roles uh-huh. but yeah no it just it's just almost proven since 300 that he's just not a money maker mm. and and like at, out of most of his movies like i think two or three of them are like critically uh, like positive really yeah so it's like mm. well i know uh that 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 whole th- let's let's talk about 300 really quickly okay because okay. because this movie okay it it was just awesome Okay, mm-hmm. nothing that we ever seen before. It was right. fantastic. Zack Snyder directing it. You know what I mean. Mm-hmm. Uh, Sam Raimi was in there, I believe, somewhere. Uh, that could be wrong. Who knows? I think I think that's right though. But and then you got Gerard Butler, right? Right. Okay. Well, everybody was pumped after this, right? Mm-hmm. And then and then granted, Zack Snyder went to Watchmen. I love the Watchmen. Mm-hmm. Okay, mm-hmm. love it. But now look at where these guys are. Right. Zack Snyder's over here single-handedly ruined the DC universe. It's <laughs> 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 all your fault, Zach. Yeah, and Gerard Butler is going to be Van Helsing. Right. <laughs> so, they yeah. put him in P.S. I love you, then they killed him almost immediately. <laughs> P.S. We This movie sucks. <laughs> P.S. Bye. <laughs> yeah, P.S. Bye. <laughs> I, I, I want to write a letter now that says that. That'd be fantastic. P.S. Bye. Yeah. All right, so fan casting now. Fan casting. This is the best part. Okay, my Dracula... I think your Dracula is better, but I think my okay. Dracula would do, you know. It would do? I would do. It would do. Like if mine didn't agree? Yeah, well, I no, I mean like yours would definitely agree, and mine would be like, I don't have no one else to fucking cast. <laughs> this is going to be all right still. Okay. Yeah, you know what I mean? So Jeffrey Dean Morgan. Oh, shit. Walking okay, down, yeah. The comedian. Um, he. I always thought of him as a burly dude, and I think of him as like a slender guy now. You yeah. know, slender, tall guy, yeah. totally fits Dracula. He's nice, clean shaven in The Walking Dead now. Mm-hmm. Kind of got that Dracula Vlad face. Uh, really would also fit that old school scene. Now, something that I notice is I think that a lot of your picks are picked for modern day, to where mm-hmm. I think a lot of yeah. my picks are picked for back for, in the day type of feel. Right, right. And we'll have to see where these movies go to see if we ever do go back. You know, is it a Captain America type of thing to where we have one movie that is all the way back, you know, blah, that's blah, blah. It. Yeah, exactly. So so let's see where that goes. Now next, Frankenstein. Um I think this is pretty good. Uh I don't it's definitely not as good as the Vigo pick, but Benedict Cumberpatch Big dude, he's got the really deep voice. He's all talking like dragging mm-hmm. the shit from smog, you know. He and the, he could and when I always think of Frankenstein and Bride of Frankenstein, I think of that like waking up off the table scene. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like coming to life, seeing life again for the first time, for the second time, you know. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think he could play that really good. And actually, my Bride of Frankenstein pick is also really based off that scene. But first, Wolfman. 
Now, Wolfman is the movie, like I said, you can give empathy to. Okay, you hate this guy. You hate him. You hate him. You think he's bug-eyed. It's not that I hate him. I just don't like him. That's what people say (laughs) when they hate somebody and they don't want to say that they hate him. No, um, Rami Malek. Okay, now, you haven't watched Mr. Robot. I haven't. Understandable. Um, USA, fantastic. Christian Slater. It has a lot to do with, like, hacking and hacktivism and all that good stuff. You know, anonymous type of thing. And uh, it's just such a psychological show. I think that Wolfman movie can be super psychological. You know what I mean? I mean, have it to even be, have Wolfman even be that mystery to where like, you know, is it maybe, maybe there's another Wolfman. Maybe that's how it's introduced. Maybe he doesn't know if he's killing these people at night or not. And it's actually Dracula killing these people at night. You know what I mean? And then he's confused. He doesn't know if it's him killing people or if it's somebody else. And then you realize that it's actually, you know, maybe both, maybe Dracula has learned how to tame the wolf man when he's fucking crazy. And he totally does black out. And maybe you see a lot of the movie from Rami Malek's eyes at first. And then the second half of the movie, you actually see what he did during that first half of the movie. You know what I mean? Have that nice little mystery in there. You know what I mean? He'd probably be a lot better looking as a wolf. Wolf too, <laughs> he he would have regular just like a big old bug eyed wolf. Yeah, <laughs> like, oh, weird, stupid smug face on a wolf. <laughs> he would look like that wolf off of uh, the Nightmare Before Christmas that wears oh, yeah. the button up plaid yeah. shirt. <laughs> yeah, that'd be him. That'd be him. Yeah, totally him. yeah. So um, that that's my pick. That's probably one of my best picks. I think. Um, uh, my Van Helsing though, dink. Keanu Reeves. Yeah, dude, you know, totally. It'd be fantastic. Give him that nice, scruffy look. You know, have him play that middle-of-the-border bad guy. Like, I right. don't know if he's a bad guy. I don't know if he's a good guy. And then Keanu Reeves is the perfect person that you can just tie that emotional thing to if you want to do that with Van Helsing. Yeah. If you want to make the viewers also be on Van Helsing's side and really make them feel torn, you can easily do that. you seen John Wick? I still have. Oh, yeah. I heard so many great God things. damn it. Though, well, let's just say if you kill a motherfucker's dog, he will go ape shit. Yeah. I could see that ape happening. Ape shit. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody. Yeah. Well, and you've also seen the s- promotional stuff oh, from yeah, totally. John Wick. So you know that look that yeah. I'm looking for. You know what I mean? Yeah. Put him in a big old leather coat, leather boots and shit. You That'd know what great. I mean? And he old does a lot guns. of uh, He does a lot of weapons training. Exactly. And stuff like so it could be like high impact. You yeah. know what I mean? One of the best scenes from the original Van Helsing. Well, not I don't know how original it is. You probably had many renditions of Van Helsing before. Mm-hmm. But Van Helsing, the movie with Hugh Jackman, Kate mm-hmm. Beckett and Sale. One of the best scenes is him fighting the the uh the wives of dracula his three wives oh, in the town you know when yeah. they're changing the stuff i love that scene you know and it, I, it was like that first high intense action scene of the movie mm-hmm. too so it's something that i like you know and you can you can pull that off you can pull off having the wife whenever you have dracula you can throw in the wives in there just for any type of thing yeah why not because it's nice because you you're going after dracula right but then they get, they, you know, the girls get in there and they fuck all that shit up, and they're like, "Oh, we're gonna get you. You didn't expect us. You came <laughs> for Dracula, but now, you, now you get the girls, and right. the girls always do work. You know what I mean? They do. I mean, they might, you know, Hugh Jackman might KO them in the end, right? But, but still, Dracula got away. That's the whole point, and Dracula it's knows that all that manipulation. Yep, all of it, all of it. So now, my Bride of Frankenstein. Now, like I said before, waking up off that table, seeing life for the second time. Is it Roseanne? <laughs> there might be a fucking Roseanne reunion. Yeah, you were saying something yeah, about yeah. that the other so, day. What, what's funny is, oh, which uh, I wonder if a lot of listeners don't know this, but you didn't know that I the, did not. the last season of Roseanne, uh, the season before that, they win the lottery. There's and during that season, Dan has a heart attack and he's fine and stuff, and then they win the lottery, and they're, the whole last season of the show has changed. Mm-hmm. Well, what really happens on the final episode? You find out that Roseanne was just writing her book finally. Ro- Dan did die in real life. They never won the lottery, but what you saw for the last season was just them. Her book. Yeah, her book, you know, mm. being like a fake life. And uh, so that'd be weird if they did a reunion. It would just have to be a sit down talk type of thing, right? Or, yeah. Yeah, because. Or, or Dan comes back. Yeah, or, or, yeah or more book. More book. More book. Yeah. Uh, much, much best. leaner Dan. Yeah, probably. And you'd probably have to throw in a uh, Big Bang Theory joke from Leonard. You oh, yeah. you would have to because, I mean, that's like the most successful person in that whole fucking, well, John Goodman probably. Yeah. But but still, you know what I mean? 
Yeah, I mean, Leonard makes so much money, though. For fucking, for that shit, they make so much money. Oh, I bet. Jeez, like a million dollars an episode. Yeah, I believe it. Yeah, ridiculous. But anyway, so <laughs> My Bride of Frankenstein, <laughs> not Roseanne. Not Roseanne? Not Roseanne. Plot okay. twist. Okay. The, the, everybody thought, and they thought it was great at first, right. but no. No, not Roseanne. Felicity Jones. Oh. Um, the, the lead actress, Jen Erso, in... Rogue One. She's yeah. fantastic. Like I said, that waking up off the scene table, that classic look that she has, too. She has a nice little classic look to her. Um, she could do the modern day, or she can do the back in the day, even if you did the big hair up, you know what I mean? I think yeah. that'd be fantastic. Uh, something that I also miss, I miss some black and white movies, man. Give me a nice horror, horror show in black and white, man. Oh, or even make, like, you know what I mean? If they do do the thing to where, like, you got the Captain America movie. Mm. You know what I mean? Make all the flashbacks black and white. Would That'd you, be fucking cool. Would, would you sit through a full feature in black and white these days? A new movie or a movie new. that I've seen? No, not a movie you've seen, just a new movie. Say um, they release Dracula and the entire film is black and white. I'd be fucking amped. I would, yeah? I'm not going to lie. Like, like, if they really believed in that and they just didn't go no holds barred and it wasn't like this type of thing where everybody's thinking that it's stupid, you know, and they and they had an idea and they went for it and they're like, no, this movie is in black and white. It's how you're supposed to experience it. Oh, dude, I'd be all in. It'd be like, how fucking cool is that? Like, I thought it was cool that, uh, you know, Walking Dead started showing their episodes the first season in black and white, which was cool yep. because comics are black and white. And then you had um, the Mad Max uh, Chrome edition, oh, yeah. and that was just like a black and white version. And it looks really cool because of just all the explosions and stuff. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, I, th- I think if a studio had balls enough to release that, I, I don't think they would, though. Sure. No, no, yeah, I, I don't yeah. think so either. Yeah, no, yeah. I'm just, I'm trying to look at it I on, think it would be as sweet a viewer's though. standpoint. Yeah. Like, you know, would, would people want to see it that way? Mm-hmm. I would love to. Um, just growing up with, like, my cousins and watching scary movies, you know, the majority of the times the ones we would watch were in black and white. Because a lot of memorable, a lot of memorable uh, first interactions with horror in my life are black, black and, and white. white. Yes, exactly. Uh, especially just, like, waking up late at night and putting on the Disney Channel. Yeah, and it's old cartoons, and it'd be the old like Halloween cartoons and stuff. And those and, were you know, black and white. Yeah, with like the bones, and the bones are all shaking yep. and shit. And yeah, it's like, dude, that's that's totally, totally right here. You know what I mean? So, yeah. No, um, I I I would enjoy it a lot. I think um, it it kind of adds to the suspense because you're having to use your imagination a little bit more. Like when when you see blood oozing or you know something like that, like you have to. You're using your imagination a little bit more, like I said. You're not; it's not right there for you. It it kind of helps you uh, dive into the the story a little bit more. Mm-hmm. You feel more immersed into it, I think. Well, and then I think you appreciate color for like what it is afterwards. Yeah, like I, I don't know if you've ever seen like production stills of like uh, I Love Lucy's apartment and like Adam's family's house. Like, mm-hmm. like supposedly Adam's family house was actually mostly pink. And it's because yeah. they wanted to get get that hue right in right. the room, you yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. I think that's so cool. And they used chocolate sauce for blood. Yeah. Because you it, couldn't tell the difference. Yeah, anymore. that's I mean, fantastic. It was going to be black and that was another, that's another thing, too, is just, like, horror, you know, just has such deep roots in black and white anyway. Yep. Like, even if it's just, like, commercialized type stuff, like, you know, the Munsters, Adam's Family, right. you know, things like that. It's just, uh, young, young Frankenstein. Amazing. Yes. Maybe one of the most memorable... Halloween Frankenstein movies of my whole life. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Mel Brooks, man. Mel Brooks, Gene Wilder. Yeah. Um, I can't remember his name, but the dude that the father from Everybody Loves Raymond. He was Frankenstein. Oh, what the fuck was his name? Yeah, I can't think of it either. I don't know. Okay, I think he passed away. Too. Yeah, yeah, he did. He did pass away. Sad day. I also loved uh, Everybody Loves Raymond. I did too. Yeah, it was just a good, nice show. It was. And then, and then he had that joke that he told his grandkid, and he's just like, "What? What the fire? The Mexican firefighter name his kids Jose and Jose B. <laughs> That's amazing. That's great. That's good stuff. That's a good show. Yeah, it reminds me of coming home from school. Yeah, it does. It does. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, oh, and then today, um, Final Fantasy thirteen. New chapter, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, th- so they made an alternative 13 chapter because everybody says that chapter 13 sucks. Okay. So 
they made an alternative chapter that you can play through and you can play it in the menu or it'll like tell you once you get to chapter 13 if you play it like through the story it'll be like do you want to play this chapter or do you want to play the alternative chapter oh. but i guess they snuck in like political jokes like ignis calls things fake news and alternative <laughs> facts and that's just fantastic that's i'm great. so glad they decided to go that route gladio dlc is coming tonight too so pretty stoked nice. pretty stoked so so real quick before we wrap this up do we need like a slaughterhouse type of franchise to where you got Freddy Krueger, Jason, Michael Myers, and um, Texas Chainsaw Massacre? Is that something that would tickle your interest? We have seen the Freddy versus Jason, and that was so ho hum. Cool back yeah. in the day, I think, when we were younger, but now it's almost like, I don't know, it's just so stupid and almost unwatchable. So are you talking like one straight film with all of them, or a um, series like, like, the, like we're talking about right now so i would like to okay so let's let's say which one would you have number one would you rather have the i'd the, rather the one have movie it, or the series i would say series series and all of them like getting locked up or something getting put in jail thing is though with text chainsaw massacre now it starts becoming not a true story yeah. which i mean really it's so far off from what it really was anyway it's right not too much of a problem yeah i mean but. it's all it's all inspiration is what it is mm-hmm. it, all they're doing is drawing inspiration from it and making their own but after watching 31 the theory of or the idea i mean of having them all locked up mm-hmm doesn't fly with me anymore yeah like having like a big like security maximum prison and then all right. everything goes to hell and, yeah and that's like your avengers movie yeah because that's kind of what theories were kind of speculating is that they did want to do something like that right and then supposedly yes we are going to be getting a new friday the 13th and stuff like that and it's like so we'll just have to see you know friday the 13th games coming out too so right. so you can tell that if there is a time to do something with this ip again it's like right it's now, now yeah. you know what i mean so but i think i think it in my opinion, it'd be a lot better if you split it up. Yep. Um, because 31 sucked. Yeah. We see, didn't even finish it. See, and now what intrigues me really, not Jason, not Freddy, yeah. not Texas. I want to see Michael Myers in a, in a, in like a universe franchise type of movie. Yeah. I think it'd be dope because I think, I think at all some point, okay, Freddy Krueger, you know, he has his quirks, you know what I mean? We've seen him get beaten, things mm-hmm. like that. Not that we haven't seen that with Michael, but Michael just doesn't give a fuck. Almost more than Jason Voorhees. Because, you know, mm-hmm. we've seen a vulnerable side of Jason Voorhees. We know that he's a mama's boy, doesn't mm-hmm. like water, things like that. It's like, what the fuck doesn't Michael like? You know what I mean? He doesn't give a fuck. Mm-hmm. Sure, you saw him, like, be all fucked up as a kid, but that's just not Michael Myers now. He's, now he's in, just different to everything. Yeah, exactly. He's, like, he's just, like, going. He never stops. He's the Energizer Bunny. And I think that would be cool to see because I think that's more sinister. And I th- and I think Michael Myers would win in a fight with Jason. I mean, you would you, probably say there's a probably a whole shitload of people say you know that's not right jason's fucking strong he got the machete you know what i mean but it's like i don't know michael michael Myers, jason Voorhees at some point has a soul michael myers doesn't i don't think michael myers ever had one exactly you know what i mean like it's just done jason was at least uh he was a kid, was you know, a, yeah. and, and like he it was really more of him being tormented, which obviously, like I said, with the newer movies of Halloween, we learned that he is. But yeah, I don't know. The 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 kid of Jason that we know, it's like it's it's more mythical. You know what I mean? Yeah. To where Halloween is just like clean cut. This kid becomes a murder. Yeah. This is making a murder on Netflix. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah, because yeah. uh, I think he he's. Jason wasn't. I don't want to say sheltered, but he he had a mom. Yeah, that exactly. loved him. Uh huh. And and he was just trying to be normal too. Yeah, and like yeah. He just had quirks and like. And but uh, yeah. I think, um, Michael Myers was so screwed up from the beginning mm-hmm. with uh, you know with the 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 family that he had. Yeah. Shitty ass fucking dirtbag sister. Yeah, I think the mom was the only one who was like decent. Jason seemed like he took the the pathetic route and then turned into a murderer that way. Right. And Michael was just like, I'm going to put this in my own hands and start murdering people like right now. Like, Fuck, it's yeah. not because I'm sad. It's not because I'm fucking, you know, like been picked. Like, no, it's just because I want to fucking finally murder you, yeah. which is different. I'm, it is I just different. Kill. Yeah, exactly. 
Because, I mean, you can try to have the argument saying, no, it's not really different. But, no, I think it is. I think it is. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. You know, fucking Jason was shunned, you know. Yes. Michael Myers wasn't ever really shunned. He just. Well, I mean, in, in the the newer ones, he was, like, bullied and stuff. Yeah, he was bullied, but, like, not to the extent of Jason. And, like I said, they both dealt with it very, very differently. Michael get mad. Jason gets sad. You yeah. know what I mean? Then eventually that manifested, but yeah, it's like and then Michael just yeah Michael just stone cold kills a kid with a fucking yeah. stick yeah so yeah and he does he beats the shit out of him fuck yeah and then doesn't he like fuck up a cat does he fuck up a cat I think the cat came first the cat came first he hurt the cat what he did came the cat. first the kid or the cat definitely the cat yeah for sure yeah and then the what? kid like followed him out into the woods or something and then yeah. he just beat the shit out of him yeah that's man that's the thing that kids do it's like I'm just gonna fall make people follow me out in the woods. And right. then, like, kids seem innocent, so a kid to a kid is just, like, innocence. And then, bam, you have those those girls that stabbed that kid and left him in the oh, in the forest. Oh, yeah, yeah, the Slender Man girls? Yeah, that's oh, fucked up. God, that's terrifying. And then in their notebooks, like, you could just tell that they were so influenced so easily oh, by okay, everything okay. that was yeah. around them. Because, I mean, they, they had said, like, Harry Potter would make them do things. Or, like, they, yeah. like, learn things from, like, other types of media. Yeah. And it's like, fuck, man, that's so fucked up is just making shit uh, yeah and it's weird because like it's just such a weird boundary you know what i mean mm-hmm. that's such a weird line like i think they got sins and they got years honestly and really but yeah i, I i'm not too i'm not 100 percent sure but they i think they stabbed that girl yeah. like 19 times yeah Man. well they were i think they were even tried as like adults or something really yeah yeah well I, if you're gonna commit a crime like that i think you should yeah yeah no no absolutely you know, whether but, you believe but it's Harry weird. Potter did it or not you know but see I mean? that's weird though see and that and that's what makes it weird it's like maybe if these kids weren't influenced by everything else and then you know the slender man thing but then it's like fuck they're they're writing about spongebob and shit it's like fuck right. at some point that's a kid mentality still weird. yeah but you weird. know maybe spongebob is kind of spongebob fucking murders. murdery oh fuck that that's the real that's the real thing that we just got to spongebob murder pants <gasps> oh my god the chum bucket is just where like see it really spongebob plankton in cahoots yeah see, totally I mean, try see he's always like trying to defend mr Krabs, but really it's always been that secret leak information they murder people that meat goes to the chum bucket right but see they want that that secret recipe to s- try to doll up their sweeney todd burgers <gasps> you see what i mean oh my god yeah see yeah yeah i like that a lot yeah. we need to pitch that to someone uh, and it could be like a sweeney todd plankton musical no thing. No, no you didn't like no. that huh? you hated that <laughs> i was so upset yeah so much music the, idea of the movie was great he and, and then he, the movie just starts off with him on a ship fucking singing he kills borat it's like oh no you're singing yeah right away no they did not waste time Fuck no they did not waste every time. last line in that fucking movie is saying yeah <sighs> yeah all right everybody that's this week that is Universal Monster Mash Monster Cast. I'm not too sure what I named it yet. You'll see. It, you'll read it and you'll be like, "Oh, haha, he named it that." And you'll get to the end of it and, and you'll realize, like, yeah. "Yeah, oh, he knew. Yeah. He knew it was going to be one of those." Yeah. yeah. So if you haven't checked us out, check us out on Instagram, Twitter at GBW Podcast, Facebook, facebookcom slash fandom talk. Uh, go on our YouTube. We have a YouTube channel now. I played some games. We unbox some stuff. And our podcasts are there. So go and subscribe. Go. And then we can be more with more than friends and do like hand stuff. If that's something that you'd love. Oh. Just hand stuff. Just though. hand We're stuff? We're not getting crazy. Oh. I was watching Superstore. <laughs> <laughs> I was watching Superstore, yeah. and they're just like, yeah, we're, we're having sex. And and then uh, the the younger chick that's pregnant, you know, uh, it, listeners, if you haven't watched Superstore, it's a fantastic It's comedy. great. You guys it's need great. to see it. It's great. But uh, she's just like, oh, man, if you guys were our age, you guys would just be just chilling. <laughs> they're like what <laughs> like yeah just chill freaking Garrett and Dina man. yeah and then she she said that hanging out is hand stuff and she goes they, they look at each other and they're like damn times have changed so if you guys want to hang out subscribe to my stuff <laughs> or if you want to chill yeah chill then call, call me yeah yeah no 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 like I said in the videos I've made don't call me text me and I probably still won't answer your text so. you won't yeah so it happens GBW out Thanks for listening. Like what you hear? Subscribe now and feel free to drop us a rate and review. Stay current with all things Geeks Between Worlds.